In this episode, there is a house in Indiana that would send shivers down the spines of those unaware of what lurks within its rooms. A dwelling containing 140 snakes was a disaster waiting to occur. And this disaster struck 36-year-old Laura Hurst as she handled a reticulated python measuring 8 feet in length. Hit like and subscribe. Welcome to Wild Assault. In 2019, on North Dan Patch Drive in Oxford, Indiana, there was a house that no one lived in. However, this does not imply that it was uninhabited. In fact, it was the most populous location on the entire block. It was where 140 snakes lived. All of them were different in size, shape, and species. Most of them were owned by Don Munson, who was the sheriff of Benton County. His daughter liked snakes as much as he did, so he let her take one of his snakes to her elementary school. He chose to take Simba, a beautiful reticulated python that was 13 feet long, or 4 meters, and weighed 45 pounds, or 20 kilograms. The children were awestruck by the enormous reptile and eager to touch its smooth, glossy skin. It was a hit with the school and principal, and Don claimed to have 52 snakes in his garage at the time. He was cultivating them for sale. In short order, their numbers increased. Don's home was infested with snakes, and he had purposefully designed it to accommodate his vast collection of reptiles. Due to the fact that he lived next door, he was able to regularly check on them. Twenty of the animals he bred for sale on the open market were not his. They belonged to another fan of reptiles. It was Laura Hurst's name. She was a mother of two with 36 years of age. Laura was raised on the family ranch. She enjoyed being outdoors. She enjoyed riding motorcycles and weekend river trips. And most of all, rescuing and rehabilitating snakes. The fact that Don Munson's property allowed her to house her pet snakes, which was her passion, made it the ideal location. She lived only 20 minutes away, and twice per week she checked on them. Her acquaintances were aware of Laura's passion for reptiles, and once she brought one to work, much to the delight of her co-workers, the snake's home was a single-story, dark blue painted bungalow with a garage at the end. Inside, there were hundreds of cages and tanks for the snakes, the conditions of their confinement conformed to the law. Don, however, never registered his snake breeding business with local authorities, which could have been illegal. There were no signs alerting visitors to the presence of snakes on the property. Consequently, no one knew what was inside. It's Laura, her four dogs, and her family. This was the case until Wednesday, October 30th, 2019, when disaster struck. Evening found Laura a harness engineering build technician driving towards North Dan Patch Drive. She pulled into the concrete driveway and opened the front door. She inspected her snakes' tanks and cages and feeds them. She then extracted one of Dunn's snakes. This snake was reticulated, length of eight feet or two and a half meters. She carefully removed the reptile from its tank. Its tongue flicked in and out of its closed mouth. It had a cool body to the touch. The skin was intricately patterned and smooth as silk. Laura sat down with it as it rolled over her legs. Inspecting the room, they were in its slender yet muscular body, pulling it along the floor. Reticulated pythons are indigenous to Southeast and South Asia, popular within the pet industry due to their relative ease of care in captivity. They can reach a maximum length of 6 meters and a maximum weight of 75 kilograms. In the wild, they primarily eat rodents, primates, pigs, and deer. They are venomless. They instead kill their prey through constriction. They are ambush predators who lie in wait for an animal that is unaware of their presence. Then they strike using their lightning-fast reactions, capturing the animal in its jaws before wrapping its body around it and suffocating it. In Indonesia, they are becoming a problem, especially for rural communities, due to the fragmentation of their habitats, which is largely the result of deforestation for oil palm plantations. The reticulated pythons must traverse farmland in order to find food. Recently, workers in the fields have been a target, and their co-workers or families have discovered them wrapped in the snake's coils, or shockingly, inside the snake itself, after it has swallowed them whole. Despite the dangers these animals pose to humans and snake enthusiasts, people all over the world continue to enjoy handling them. Laura picked up the enormous python from the floor and returned it to its tank. It was weighty. 
She placed it on her shoulders and retraced her steps towards the open tank. As she did so, however, the snake tightened its hold on her neck. Laura pulled on it to loosen it, but the harder she pulled, the tighter the snake became. Laura attempted to remove her head from underneath it, but there was no space. Within a fraction of a second, the snake had wrapped itself so tightly around Laura's neck that she was unable to escape. She felt the pressure and her face rising as its muscles contracted and squeezed tighter and tighter. Laura attempted to turn its head, but she was unable to reach it. As the blood supply to her head was cut off from the rest of her body, she caught it at the skin. The snake moved barely. Its eyes were fixed and its skin glistened as it surrounded Laura's neck. She began to have difficulty breathing. Her lips become bluish and her eyes swell. And she knew she was in grave danger. She was unable to scream. She was unable to access her phone. Things were moving too quickly. And within minutes, she began to feel dizzy due to a lack of oxygen and blood flow to the brain. She was aware that she was about to faint. After a few seconds, she fell to the ground. The snake continued to approach his fixator despite the fact that she was now motionless and unresponsive on the ground. Don observed Laura's car in the driveway when he looked out his window that evening and saw it parked in the driveway. He was aware that she typically checked the snakes on Wednesday evenings, so he decided to stop by to see how she was doing. He opened the entrance and called her name. There was no answer. He traversed the zoo and passed by the open tank. He then entered the next room. The eight-foot-long python was still wrapped around Laura's neck as she lay on the floor. Don rushed toward her. The snake was wrapped loosely around Laura's neck, and so he pulled it off easily. He immediately dialed 911 for assistance. When they arrived, they attempted to revive Laura, but to no avail. Don was naturally in the firing line after Laura's death. Why did he have so many snakes in his house? Did he have the proper documentation to legally house them all? It appears that the licensing requirements for keeping reptiles in Indiana were not entirely clear. Because they are not native to Indiana, the Department of Natural Resources does not regulate reticulated pythons. They do regulate venomous snakes and those considered endangered, however. As reticulated pythons are neither of these, they are exempt from permit requirements. Since 1978, 18 Americans have been killed by constrictors in the United States. However, reptile enthusiasts assert that dogs cause far more serious injuries and deaths to humans each year than snakes. The only reason an attack like Laura's makes headlines is because it is so rare. Town council members were eager to impose a new law on snakes in the state in the aftermath. It would ensure that people knew who kept snakes and where they were kept for safety, and in the event of an emergency. However, Don would have been in greater jeopardy if he had been breeding snakes for sale without registering the property as a business. It is unlikely that any of these outcomes would have prevented Laura's death from occurring in the first place. People who have a passion for potentially dangerous animals are aware of the risks they assume. Like so many other things, nobody believes it will happen to them until it actually does.